Hello, hello. Um, you are watching the third annual Women's History Month Black Girl Magic Book Chat. For anybody who is new here, my name is Larissa McNeil, and I am the African American Resource Center Coordinator for the Tulsa City County Library. Every March since I've been working here at TCCL, in honor of Women's History Month, I have been reading books by and about Black women in an effort to showcase the range of stories and the complexities of our stories for you all. Um, it's been really fun to do that and to sort of get outside of books that I typically read and to just be able to dive into other people's, what other people have to say. Um, so I've got a list of books this month that I'm really excited about, really excited to share with you all. I've got some YA, which is what I'm talking about today, but I've also got some women's fiction, some romance, and some other stuff. So it's going to be great. Um, so let's get into this week's book. So I read Good as Gold by Candace Buford. So this is my copy. As you can see, there's nothing on the spine. This is actually my copy that I bought from Fulton Street Books, um, shameless plug for a black woman owned bookstore here in Tulsa. But um, we do have this book for you to check out at TCCL. I always make sure that the books I read are ones that you can check out from our libraries. Um, but this is the book that I read this past week. I picked it up because of the cover, because <laughs> it's so great. Um, but it, it's really good. So it is a YA novel, and I know that's not everybody's um, cup of tea, but I thought it was good. So YA is young adult. Um, typically it's about teenagers, high school age people, college age people. Um, and so it is one that kind of examines the history of like race in a small town, race and class, and just buried secrets. You know, small towns always have secrets. So <laughs> Good as Go follows a high school senior named Casey in this place called Langston. It's set in Georgia, um, which is great because I'm from Georgia, so I always like to read books. Like I'm always excited when books are um, set back at home. Um, so, <clears throat> set in this small town, and this small town is segregated, but by class, not so much race. Although, as we all know, those things tend to overlap, but um, for the most part, it's separated, segregated by class. On one side, you have the charmies, those who live a charmed life, I assume is what that means. Um, so, rich folks, folks with some money. A lot of money, not even new money too, like old money. This is one of those towns that, you know, generations have lived here. Um, so, charm is on one side. On the other side, downstream, you have the downstreamers <laughs> um, on the other side of the lake. So, it's got, this town has a robust tourist in industry. Um, people come in to this town that was supposedly built on hope and on friendship. You've got a founder who apparently is known for his compassion um, and so with that, there's also tales of gold buried under this town. So tourists often come and they die for, you know, treasure or whatever. That's like the town shtick. So Casey, our main character, she was once a charming. Her father made a bunch of money working in finance or something money wise. Um, and not only that, he's from money. So the house, the mansion that they lived in was actually passed down through generations. And so <clears throat> um, she was a charming. Then her dad's company goes bankrupt. They lose everything. They lose this house that had been in the father's family for a couple generations. They lose money, obviously. Um, Casey's college fund is gone. Just, they lose a lot of stuff. And so they are forced to move downstream to where her mom's grandma used to live in her in that old house and so on top of that Casey has begun working at the country club that she used to go to um, and so obviously the reception that she gets now is a lot different from when she was going and she gets a lot of that sort of faux concern that you know how on tv you see when people kind of fall from grace so to speak they people are all concerned about them but really they're talking about them behind their backs that's just kind of the vibe that we get here um and she's also now working with people who used to serve her so that is a little strange for her when casey learns that they may lose the house that they're living in so obviously they lost their big mansion and now they're living in her grandma's old house 
when she finds out that they may lose that, that the taxes on it um, are way more than they can afford at the moment, she's like, okay, I've got to do something because her dad and her mom are fully checked out. Dad is now spending all of his time in the garage doing puzzles. Mom is spending all of her time drunk. She's just like drinking wine the whole day. So her family is completely checked out. She's got a big sister, but her big sister is off at university. So she's pretty much feeling like I'm by myself. No one here is going to help me. I've got to figure out how to keep us from losing our house because my parents have completely checked out. So how does a teenager make money? They pawn their stuff. <laughs> so Casey has become friends with Tanner, who is a downstreamer, but he works at the club with her. His family owns a pawn shop, so she trusts him. So she goes to him and says, hey, I want to sell some of my grandma's old jewelry, some old scarves, you know, like designer Hermes, 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 <laughs> um, you know, fancy scarves. I want to sell these things because I need some money. Maybe I can get a few thousand. I don't know what she thinks that she's going to do with a few thousand dollars, but it's something, right? So she goes down. She's got a box of stuff. In that treasure, she finds an old coin um, that turns out to be real money from the Bank of Toulouse, a ruined town that sits under Langston. The kicker um, is that the town that is no longer there was actually a town founded by Black people, and no one has ever acknowledged it or its destruction. And so Casey and her new friends, her new downstreamer friends, um, they set out to find the truth. But town leadership, including the mayor, um, will do a lot, including shooting and almost running down in the car a group of teenagers, um, all to keep this information about this town and some buried treasure to themselves. So I thought that this was a fairly solid read by Candace Buford. Um, it was tied up a little bit too neatly in the way that like a lot of YA is, but that didn't take away, I think, from kind of the conversation that you can still have through reading this book. Um, like I said, it's about race, it's about class, and it brings up a lot of questions about that. Like the town's revered founder was a Confederate soldier. Um, the land that they're on was stolen um, and raised down. And it makes you think about just how much of our history we don't know because the people in power work very, very hard to keep that history away from us. Um, what really stuck out to me was how much this story made me think about Lake Lanier in Georgia. So like I said, I was born and raised in South Georgia. Um, Lake Lanier is in North Georgia, but it's a man-made lake that people often drown in. Honestly, I think there was a drowning just a little while ago. Um, and the story that gets passed, you know, along for a lot of us Georgians is that this lake is haunted or um, cursed or something, right? <coughs> the truth is that part of the area that is now like Lanier used to be um, a place called Oscarville. And Oscarville was a small, all-black community. In 1912, um, so-called attacks on a white woman um, caused multiple black men and boys to be beaten and hung, one as young as 16 years old. And in the following months of after this lynching, um, people, a group of white men who called themselves something like Night Raiders, something ridiculous like that, they would go back to this town and terrorize the citizens still living there, forcing them to leave until this town was completely abandoned and there were no black people left. And Lake Lanier was built on it in the 50s or I think 40s, 50s. It's like it was a dam between two other rivers. I don't know the, the nitty gritty, but I do know that. Um, and so this book kind of gives me when I think about that destruction, this book's this book gives me that same sort of feeling, I guess. I don't want to say vibe because, no. But this book gives me that same feeling. A black town forcibly displaced and a tourist trap put on top of it. 
uh, without speaking to the horrible harm done to achieve that. So what I appreciate about this book is, uh, like I said, that although like kind of on the surface, these books seem a little surface level, but they are stories that provide a gateway to deeper information or wanting to know more. Like I am about to go look up Blake Lanier again <laughs> and just kind of really dig into what was Oscarville and how was it justified? These people being forcibly removed from their land and literally just by random city, random white citizens. Um, so books like this, like I said, they always they always want me. They give me more. They want me to get more, um, and so they give me a basis for some stuff to research. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna go research some more about like Lanier and kind of learn more about the truth um, about a place that certainly bears some of the energy of that tragedy over a hundred years ago because you can believe or not believe in curse curses or hauntings or whatever the case is. But there is bad energy, it seems, um, with so many people dying on this lake. You should look it up. Um, in any case, I do recommend Good As Gold. I thought it was great. Um, I think teenagers managers will actually enjoy it, too. Um, so check it out. Next week, I am reading a book called The Survivalists about a black lawyer. Um, and there's some doomsday prepping. I'm excited to see how that happens or what happens. Um, so I will see you all next Friday with The Survivalist. Thank y'all for um, watching this video and gearing up for another iteration of Black Girl Magic Book Chat. See you soon.